Hydralazine is a drug that you guys will see daily on wards. Its use is frequent, and there are uses for which there's actually a mortality benefit. So in short, you should know it, making it a fantastic fodder for boards questions. By the end of this video, I want you guys to be able to describe hydralazine's mechanism of action, as well as some of its clinical uses, and cite potential adverse effects. Hydralazine is a potent vasodilator that acts primarily in the arteries and arterioles with no effects on systemic veins. So let me repeat that for you. It only inhibits vasoconstriction of arteries and arterioles with absolutely zero effect on systemic veins. So how does it work? Here's our diagram showing endothelial and smooth muscle cells of a vessel. Hydralazine increases cyclic GMP. Cyclic GMP will bind and liberate protein kinase G inside of the smooth muscle cell. And this phosphorylates IP3 which decreases calcium influx from the sarcoplasmic reticulum of muscle cells. As always, less calcium means less contraction, and less vascular smooth muscle contraction means less constriction, and therefore vasodilation. So what does arteriolar vasodilation do to our afterload? Well, if afterload is the load that the heart has to pump against, then vasodilation will decrease it. For this reason, hydralazine is particularly useful in treating acute hypertension. It's also one of the few antihypertensive drugs that can be used in hypertension in pregnancy. You can give this to a patient with heart failure, but you have to make sure that you also include an organic nitrate to venodilate. In this setting, you drop the afterload with hydralazine and drop the preload with the nitrate. If the patient's not in heart failure, then you usually get a beta blocker at the same time as hydralazine. So why might this be? Well, it inhibits the baroreceptor reflex. So we just caused a huge drop in the patient's afterload. And as a result of this, the stretch receptors in the aortic arch and the carotid sinus are going to sense this change and increase sympathetic output in order to prevent decreased perfusion to the brain. And the heart responds to this by increasing cardiac output, including an increase in heart rate. All right, on to side effects and contraindications. We'll run through these quickly and then come back to them. So these are reflex tachycardia, fluid retention, angina, headache, and drug-induced lupus. Adrelazine is also contraindicated in angina or coronary artery disease. So reflex tachycardia we just covered. Afterload and blood pressure go down, so it's common to have a tachycardic response. Fluid retention and headache I remember in a related way. Hydralazine is a vasodilator and so it causes things to dilate. The legs get bigger as do the cerebral blood vessels. This is far from the most scientifically complete way to remember things on test day, but you're not going to be tested on these mechanisms. If it helps you remember it better, it's also worth recalling that this information is actually reconcilable with headache treatments. So remember what the mechanism of action of triptans is? Well, they're given for migraines and they're vasoconstrictors. So as we've learned here, vasodilation, in this case of arterioles with hydralazine, can cause headache, and vasoconstrictors relieve that. The anginal component here is a bit complicated. When people have coronary artery disease, their coronaries are often calcified and not very compliant. Therefore, when you give an arterial vasodilator, the only coronary arteries that can vasodilate are the ones that are less diseased. So when you give vasodilators to a patient with CAD, it can, therefore, shunt blood towards the healthier vessels and away from the diseased ones that can't dilate. This is why it can cause angina, as well as why it's contraindicated in that case. Finally, hydralazine is one of the drugs that can cause drug-induced lupus. So what is the very high-yield antibody that you can look for in the serum to determine if lupus is a consequence of a drug? Right, that would be antihistone antibodies. All right, guys, time for a flash quiz. So what two drugs in the cardiology section cause drug-induced lupus? Well, one we just covered, that's hydralazine, and the other is procainamide. Quick summary. Hydralazine's mechanism of action is arterial vasodilation and an increase in cyclic GMP. Because it reduces afterload, it's used in hypertension as well as heart failure. Its adverse effects, as with all drugs, is related to its mechanism of action. 
So hydralazine causes reflex tachycardia, fluid retention, headache, and angina, and is contraindicated in angina as well as coronary artery disease. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you liked the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below. And as always, comments are more than welcome. Study hard and stay healthy, my friends.